Hello, everyone. I apologize for my, my voice. It's um, very early in the morning and I haven't really spoken too much so far. <clears throat> and it's always kind of like uh, rusty a little bit. But anyhow, you probably noticed that it is getting darker and darker, unfortunately. So, yes, we are nearing the um, uh, the equilibrium, uh, the uh, equinox. Uh, there's still another six weeks, but you can already tell that the... Uh, uh, the daylight is shortening, unfortunately. And uh, uh, today and tomorrow, we are going to have a time when you can actually put your life in order, which is badly needed. If you look around uh, in the world, you can see that <clears throat> things are really falling apart. There's the Olympic Games, uh, which are really always very, very uplifting. But uh, so many things are, are around it. To show, to show that something is really wrong with the world, something is wrong with how we look at stuff. And um, I don't know how to rectify this. I have just come back from London and I uh, I was really horrified by the, the riots and the, uh, the the violence, the sheer violence that people feel. But this is what you get. This If you don't realize the normalcy uh, for people, you if you... Uh, the leaders, the uh, political leaders and the police are not there for the people to fight against violence and against horrifying deeds. And you don't, you are not able to save the people. This is what you get, unfortunately. So I don't think that it's going to be better before it, it is getting worse. Uh, one of my um, acquaintances uh, who lives in the United States thinks that there's going to be civil war. I also... Uh, listened to a psychic who says that he sees uh, very, very dark moments for the United States uh, over October, no, September, October, November. We will see. Hopefully he will be wrong. But I also can feel that there's a lot of tension uh, among the people. So we should really um, somehow utilize the moments of normalcy or the moments when the stars are allowing us to put things in order. This is exactly uh, such a time. Let's take a look at the London chart. And as you can see, there is a Venus Hygieia Earth trine on August 9th. At 9.27 uh, a.m. London time. Uh, and this is a very short-lived um, aspect, but you can utilize it. And, and uh, it's always good to have such uh, uh, short-lived aspects even uh, if we are able to put things in order so how to put your life in order first of all you should know that venus is about love and harmony and equilibrium and normalcy of course uh, how you feel well of course <laughs> you fall in love nothing is normal but yes uh, venus is the goddess of love and beauty but at the same time it is also uh, I mean, the uh, astrological Venus is also responsible for well-being and for money. And uh, Earth is uh, the uh, element of normalcy, the element of the Earth plane, practical, normal, down-to-earth things. Uh, and also the senses are linked to the Earth uh, as as uh, element. And Hygieia was the daughter of Asclepius, one of the daughters of Asclepius, all his daughters and, and uh, sons became doctors, became physicians, except for Hygieia, who said, why wait until people get sick? Why don't we create any harmony around us? Uh, cleanliness, uh, balance, um, proper exercise, uh, well uh, eating, eating well, eating uh, normally and, and and nutritiously. So this is what hygiene is about. The word hygiene comes from her name. And in comic astrology, we link hygiene to a balanced life and to create a sacred space around you. So this is a re really brilliant moment in time for, for from this viewpoint. As you can see, Virgo is, uh, is rising and Virgo is par uh, by definition, the sign where you can put things in order, where you put, where you can uh, actually act as, as, as a clean energy. And Juno is uh, rising in the first house together with Black Moon Lilith, the South Node and the Moon. We have a Libra Moon, which again is balance. So it again suggests that you can put things in order if you keep your balance. 
Neptune is on the descendant in its own sign uh, and in the house of open enemies and uh, spouses. Uh, the Chiron Aries conjunction is still tight. So is the Mars Jupiter, which is uh, applying by the Chiron Aries is already separating. It will be again, uh, I think only next year, it will, they will uh, be conjunct. And as you can see, Venus is conjunct uh, Transpluto, dimension jump and channeling, and retrograde Mercury. So you can find answers within. All these are in the 12th house and the house of uh, self undoing. But in comic astrology, we say that this is our piggy bank, comic piggy bank, where you keep things that are either too uh, important or too uh, scary or too dangerous or too painful. So this is the spirit time moment, and Pulse Athena and Lilith are again. Uh, traveling together, the two strong feminine Pallas Athena is wisdom and Lilith is reward against injustice. And we will visit the Mars Jupiter conjunction in a couple of days and we will see what the space time moment is telling us. Uh, there's a rose thorn, and this is a this is an aspect that I that I didn't name. Actually, it was my older granddaughter who looked at it and she said, this is typically like a rose thorn, long, but very uh, keen and prickly. And yes, she was right because it, there's a trine which provides perfect harmony, but at the same time, this particular uh, planetary picture uh, con contains two karmic aspects, the lesser one, which is the semi sextile, and the stronger one, which is the queen kungs. So actually this trine is surrounded by karmic flavor and it is created by Hygieia, Black Moon Lilith, and the Venus, Mercury, and Transpluto triple conjunction. So, uh, and if you take a look, the, the, the it's not an apex, but the focal point, uh, we only say apex if it's a uh, isosceles triangle. And so if you, you have a, a symmetry, symmetry form, here this is asymmetrical, so you don't have an apex, but you do have a focal point and that is Hygieia put things in order. How? By creating harmony, by channeling down the information you need, and by reflection, reflecting your inner self. And if you take a look at the um, uh, transcendental celestial object, it really, uh, they are really supporting this idea. Uh, on Black Moon Lilith, you have Antigone. Uh, if you are familiar with Sophocles' drama, the same, with the same title, Antigone, she wants to do stuff which is according to the divine law. And in the in the drama, divine law clashes with man-made law. And divine law should always precede, always conquer man-made law. And that's exactly what Antigone does. So she she uh, buries her, her brothers, which is forbidden uh, by the king. And she pays for uh, it for the deed with her own life, and uh, it's a very sad story. But divine law always prevails. So when you look around and you see the craziness of the world, yes, a, an era is ending, and a new era is going to be born. Uh, this with Pluto in uh, in uh, Aquarius, the final ingress, and with Neptune leaving its own sign and moving into Aries, we will have a brand new era, and all this craziness will be wash the way you will see and all of a sudden people will really go back to normalcy the problem is that this is a pendulum and when a pendulum goes to one side one extreme the backlash is always very painful and very violent and this is what you're going to see in uh, the, uh, the upcoming uh, years unfortunately and fortunately in uh, unfortunately if if we are in the midst of of violence and fortunately for the world because normalcy needs to be set uh, into being again so if you take a look at the venus uh, uh, transpluth and mercury triple conjunction we have nemesis the punisher of hubris and this is what we need because mankind has this terrible hubris at the moment we vote against uh, against the god's will Medusa, who is one of the Gorgon sisters, and she's the uh, she's the symbol of enraged feminine, and this is what you see in the Olympics, of course. And Mitis, who is the goddess of wisdom, and Diomedes, who is he's, he's an interesting figure in Greek myths, 
there are many Diomedeuses. Two are most important. One is the is the hero, one of the heroes of the Trojan War, a fighter, and the other one is the Trakian king who has man-eating horses. It's a vi very violent hero, uh, and in its own Venus. Okay. We also have a dissolved square and a quindicilla arrow in the London chart. This is only in the London chart. For instance, if you want to see what the Budapest chart shows, uh, you can see it in the Hungarian version of this, where it's a, it's a lot more complex uh, planetary picture, but we, but we don't have the Queen of Chile arrow. You have this dissolved square uh, with a, uh, or a mini a mini engine, a giant a square and a semi sextile So again, you have the three uh, potential uh, families of, of uh, aspects. Uh, a square, a trine, and a, a square is, of course, the, uh, the tension, the trine is the blessing, and the semi sextile is, is a karmic aspect. So it's, there's a mini karmic energy in there. Uh, this is uh, by Mars and the Moon and Hygie and, uh, and Astrea. Sorry, Astrea is the karma breaker. And uh, the Mars Astrea uh, mutable square is the driving force in this uh, dissolved square in this mini engine. And uh, it means that we need to break all the embedded karma by exercising the will. And the Queen of Chile arrow, uh, is, the arrowhead is again the, uh, so that's an apex, the arrowhead here, is the, the, um, the, the, um, um, the, the descendant. And the descendant is, of course, uh, relationships and open enemies. And if you look around at the, the sheer violence that you can see in big cities in throughout England, uh, um, it's this is what, what, uh, uh, it symbolizes. And the Moon Astrea semi sextile, of course, is always about how you can transform and, and transmute your uh, your spiritual essence. Okay. And here are the transcendental celestial objects. On the Moon, there's Logos, creation by word, and Vinda Matrix, Epsilon Virgo. And this is the other hand of the celestial virgin. The uh, Alpha Star, uh, Spica or Spica, is the life-giving hand. The, the, it holds the wheat shaft, and uh, Vindamatrix is the uh, the uh, fruit picker hand, and it's the an allusion to to uh, the uh, uh, the more um, um, down-to-earth happiness of of the world, uh, of worldly things. And on Australia, you have Zosma, uh, Delta Leo which is the uh, spine of the celestial lion. The whole constellation Leo is linked to kingship and rulership and sovereignty. How you become a king, How? You, the, what are the different stages of the king? And Zosma is where Hercules is breaking the spine of the celestial uh, lion, of the lion, actually of the Nemean lion. And if you take a look at, at the uh, labors of Hercules, uh, all 12 labors are linked to to uh, science, to astrological science. And the story starts with the, the conquering of the, or the killing of the Nemean lion. So it's not starting with Aries, starting with Leo. And the story goes that this, this lion uh, has a fur that cannot be cut by sword or, or, or any kind of um, uh, weapon, like masculine weapon. It's of course the sword is always a, a phallic symbol, of course. So it's very, it's a very masculine thing, and it's uh, the the um, the fur of the uh, Nemean lion uh, withholds it, so it does. You can't kill it with the normal physical masculine methods. And uh, when uh, Hercules goes to the uh, uh, cave of the Nemean lion and goes enters the cave. Turns out that the cave has two entrances and the lion simply goes out of the other side. So the hero has to start uh, the labor with uh, actually uh, uh, somehow uh, shutting that second uh, second entrance. And then it, he enters the cave and fights with the Nemean lion for exactly 30 days, which is a moon cycle. 29 and a half days is a moon cycle from one uh, new moon to the next. And uh, finally, he's able to kill it by going behind it and then uh, breaking its spine. And that is Zosma. And Zosma uh, is a healing word for all kinds of, of 
breakages and and uh, broken knives and uh, we go there to re rehabilitate to heal uh, whenever we had a series of really difficult lives how to how to get out of it how to how to heal um, when we are totally broken and how to actually go back the ability to get the strength again to go back into the arena of fighting uh, a life energy and how after being broken we can become whole again so that is the symbol of or that's what zasna symbolizes and the olympics are still going on i wish well for the Olymp olympic heroes <laughs> fighting there and i'm really hoping that uh, it will become some sort of norm so we can turn back to some sort of normalcy because that is what we badly need and now for one or two days you can put your life in order Please do so. And thank you for listening. Bye-bye.